guys welcome back to my channel today I'm gonna show you how I've made this absolutely gorgeous extra large gumdrop Christmas tree ornaments and this is the perfect DIY for anyone that loves the Candyland Christmas theme Oh my gosh, you guys, I've been wanting to make these ornaments since forever and I finally did it. These are by far the hardest type of decorations to found on the market because either they are overpriced or they are too small or the shape is not round enough. I don't know, they're just so damn difficult to found in the shop and I've tried to look everywhere for this type of decorations and finally I was like I'm gonna make my own so I really made it exactly as I want them to look I'm so happy with how they turn out they look so sparkling in person trust me the video doesn't do justice and so let's jump right into it and let me show you how I've done it so the first things you're gonna need is some sort of a mold to create that beautiful gumdrop shape and the only things that was big enough for me to create the vision I had in my mind are this kind of plastic eggs that you can easily found in any toy shop or you know in the toy department in any grocery store and that's exactly where I found this one but you can also found jumbo fillable eggs on Amazon I'm gonna link them down below they are usually sold on Easter season and they're quite difficult to found during the winter but I was able to locate couple seller on amazon.com the only problem for me was that due to the long distance it wouldn't be delivered to me in time to make this tutorial and so I ended up purchasing the one in the toy section in my local grocery store then you're gonna also need some sort of expanding foam and in this tutorial I'm testing two different type of brand the first one is from Unibond which cost me seven pounds and the second one is from the popular brand Gorilla and it cost me only two pounds the paradox is that the cheapest one end up being my favorite type of foam and you will see why later so high price doesn't always equal to good quality then of course when you work with expanding foam I strongly encourage you to use some disposal gloves and also a face mask you know to protect your skin and uh, you know you don't want to inhale anything toxic or harmful to your health so always be smart and use some sort of protective gear and then you may need also a bottle spray you know to spray some water into your molds because this will allow the foam to don't stick you know and expand properly so you always want to prep wherever mold you're gonna use by spraying some water in it and this is usually specified in the foam packaging so make sure to read the instruction because it may slightly vary from brand to brand but pretty much they all operate in the same way obviously you have to shake you know your foam very very well before you start spraying it and then using the thin applicator which looks like a straw that comes with your um, spray foam you want to start spraying it inside your mold and just make sure you don't feel it all the way because of course foam is gonna expand and double and also triple the size and in fact the first time I was surprised how much this foam really expand you're gonna see it very soon but hey this is the fun part of crafting you know making mistakes and learning from it So as you can see the foam is expanding by the seconds and it ended up looking like a little Hiroshima mushroom. <laughs> so it really was kind of funny. It looks like a whipped cream or like a giant cupcakes. But uh, in this case just let it dry and you're gonna fix it later. I'm gonna show you how. I let it curate it for a whole 24 hours and the next day I start gently removing the foam from the egg molds. And you want to be really careful to don't you know tear them apart so be gentle and if you have gaps and holes all you want to do is to fill them with a bit of extra fresh foam as I'm doing right here and just let it sit for another few hours and then you want to repeat the same process and here I was testing the second type of foam which is the one from Gorilla brand and you can notice straight away it's much whiter and also after a curate it ended up being kind of smoother and 
I don't know, I kind of um, expanded better, like I also loved the overall shape and it was more compact. If you notice, there's less holes and so I was more pleased with this type of foam, although it was much cheaper. So expensive stuff, not always equal good quality because in this case, you know, the cheapest foam was the best one. So my advice is try, if possible, a couple different spray foam and see which one performs better. And here I'm gently removing even the second batch of uh, gumdrops that I let curate overnight. And then using a um, knife cutter, I'm starting to remove all the extra pieces that I don't really need and start giving that gumdrop shape to each piece. Take your time in this phase because you know the more precise you are in carving your gumdrop shape the better the final results will be and also you want to be careful when you handle you know any type of knife. So as you can see, I use both parts of my eggs, the bottom and the top part. So the top part is what I was more interested in because that is the typical gumdrop shape. But I thought to maximize, you know, my productivity and make as many gumdrop as possible. And, you know, I wanted to see how also a more rounded shape of gumdrop will look. And so that's why I use both part of my egg mold. And so as you can see, I ended up having two different type of um, basic uh, gumdrop shape, but very rough. And so from this point on, obviously we want to polish them and make them as pretty as possible. And so starting with filling all the little gaps, I've been using this kind of gap filler, which I had in my house. So when I create this type of tutorial, you know, I try to play with my creativity and also with all the material I have available in my house. And that's really what I love the most. I always try to create amazing projects, spending as little as possible. So I try to keep everything in budget. And when I repurpose stuff that I have, you know, around my house, it gives me such a satisfaction you have no idea and this gap filler I had it since last time I moved from my old house because I have to fill some holes I've made on my walls you know to hang a few pictures and uh, the quality is amazing because it's very very soft almost like a mousse consistency and so it was still perfectly usable and I start little by little, you know, filling all the little cracks and holes in each one of my gumdrops. And obviously you want to try to fill it as well as possible, but don't obsess over perfection too much on this stage because we're gonna smooth it out later on. And then you want to let sit this material overnight once again so it becomes very very hard and so the next morning they were ready to be worked on and using this sandpaper sponge I already have available in my house I start smoothing out the surface in all my gumdrops. So basically in this stage I was trying to make my gumdrop base as smooth and as perfect as possible and looking as close as possible to an actual gumdrop. And so the top part of my egg mold was already perfectly shaped and it didn't require much work from me. While instead the bottom part I kind of cut out you know the top edges to give a smoother round shape and then I perfected you know the base of it and again I just you know keep using my knife to cut excess pieces and use my gap filler to fill all the cracks and holes and then of course my sandpaper to smooth out the final surface and as you can see, after working on it for a few minutes, it starts looking more round with a perfectly domey kind of shape. 
Now I'm gonna show you a second way in how you can achieve this basic kind of uh, gumdrop shape and uh, as you can see I'm referring to those pre-made polystyrene eggs that you can found on the market. The only issue is that they are very difficult to found in a large size and they are usually very very expensive and so that's the only reason why I've started this tutorial showing you the technique with the spray foam because first of all is way cheaper and second of all you have full control in how big or small you can make your gum drops if you want to try to look yourself if you can found you know this kind of large pre-made eggs it's up to you but just be aware they're gonna cost you much more and they are quite difficult to found in an extra large size so obviously this second method it's much faster and easier because all you have to do is to just cut in a half your eggs but after all, it wasn't that difficult neither by using the spray foam. It just required a little bit more work, you know, in smoothing out all the surfaces. And now that we have all our basic gumdrop shapes, we can start with the fun part, which is of course coloring and adding all those little extra details to give that final touch. And for this project, obviously, I've been using a lot of pastels colors. You know me, I love pastels. And I found this beautiful pastel acrylic paint kit on Amazon. I'm going to link it down below. And the colors were just perfect and already pre-made. So I didn't have to waste time, you know, making them myself by mixing primary colors. And so here I start one by one painting all my gumdrops. And as you can see, this paint has the perfect consistency because it's very thick and has a beautiful coverage. And so the color really, really pop. I thought these are pastels. And then to make it easier for me to paint all the way around it, I just use toothpicks and stick them on the bottom and use it as a little handle. And this helped me to speed up my workflow so much more. And then I kept coloring each single gumdrop with different colors. Now don't worry if you see still a few imperfections here and there in your basic gumdrop shape because we are gonna eventually glue on top of it you know fake sugar to give that realistic you know gumdrop look and so that will really camouflage any type of imperfection and that's why this type of project is very forgiving. Now the only color I wasn't crazy about in my pastel acrylic kit was the orange because it was too washed off and so I create my orange using primary colors as you can see. So basically I just mixed you know a bit of yellow with a bit of red and eventually you can add also a little bit of white if you want to make it more pastel and that's how I create my perfect orange color. And the same things I did for my green. Then I strongly recommend you to use a little sort of, um, you know, reusable pots as I did myself. I found these on my local pound store. They are so inexpensive and they are great for any craft kind of project. And then I use some film, you know, to cover. So I block the hair and my paint wouldn't dry because you're going to need again your acrylic paint to color the bottom of your gumdrops. And so, you know, we don't want to waste any material. And that's why the best way to go is to just use a little piece of film. Then while the paint was still wet, I start sprinkling on top of it some iridescent glitters. I love this glitter brand. I'm going to link it down below. And I literally just start sprinkling glitters all over my gun drops. And as you can see, they start looking really, really pretty already, but we want to make them extra special. You know me, I'm a perfectionist. And so we just need to let them dry very, very well. And then we're going to move on to the next step. In the meantime, I was trying to recover as many glitter as possible because, you know, glitters are very expensive and we don't want to waste anything. So once the paint was dry, I take some toothpick once again and I stick them on the very top of each gumdrop to use as a handle on the inverted way so I was able to color the bottom of my gumdrops without 
touching the pretty surface with the glitter and as you can see there were so many holes on the bottom of my gumdrop and I thought well it's the bottom nobody's gonna see it so it's okay if I just give a little coat of paint and leave it like that but then it was bothering me so so much and so I grab my crack filler and I start filling all the little holes and try to make the surface as smooth as possible and as you can see since the paint was still wet it kind of mixed together with my crack filler and it turned pink automatically so I didn't have to repaint it and it kind of worked out perfectly. And here I kept repeating the same process, you know, to color each gumdrop base using the correspondent paint color. And then I found this smart way to let my gumdrop dry by sticking them upside down using the toothpick in this sort of a little a mattress that I have in my house. And so once again, I've been using the resources I have available around me. And I advise you to do the same. I was actually about to use my yoga block to stick my gumdrops upside down, but then thankfully I remembered I had this little mattress. And so I used this one instead. Basically use whatever you have available and try to be very creative with your resources. And so while I was waiting for my paint to dry, I've started brainstorming a way to recreate that beautiful crystal sugar effect that gumdrops have in the surface. And you know, this is not an easy texture to recreate. And so I literally went through all my arts and crafts supply I have in my house. And the only things I was able to come up with are this large gemstone that I've purchased from my local pound store last year for only one pound. And I thought, let me just grab a few of these gemstones, put it inside a Ziploc bag and try to smash them into small little pieces. And you know, then I'm gonna glue them on top of my gumdrops. And this in my mind was a pretty genius idea, right? But the reality is that uh, these gemstones are made with uh, clear plastic and no matter how transparent the plastic is, if you try to dent it or damage it in any way, it's gonna turn white because of course it's plastic. Besides, they are pretty impossible to break. They literally bounce back as you can see. And so it didn't work out at all. It was a major failure. So I quickly moved on to plan B and I did notice that I have also smaller gemstone and I thought rather than trying to break the largest one let me just use the smallest one as they are and glue them on top of my gumdrops and so this will recreate that crystal sparkle effect that I'm trying to achieve. I wasn't sure if these were going to look nice because they look more like small diamonds not really like fake sugar but I was willing to give it a go and so I start separating my smallest gemstone from the biggest one and I obviously only want to use the smallest one. After a few hours the paint was completely dry and so I was able to keep working on my gumdrops. And so in my house I had also these small little um, kind of hooks you know that you can use for joyals or any other project you may have and so I used the hole where I initially inserted my toothpick to glue my little hook and that is the part where we're gonna insert our ornament strings so that you can hang them on the Christmas tree and so this was the perfect way to fill that little hole. You can use any type of glue, but I prefer to use my glue gun because it has a really strong hold once it's dry and it dries very, very fast. And then I start attaching the strings on each gumdrop.
as you can see the gumdrops are beautiful even just like that because they're super sparkling and very adorable but if you are extra like me and you want to give that va va voom effect you can use some clear beads or mini diamonds as I have right here and create that fake sugar effect on top of it. I got my clear beads from Amazon and I'm gonna link them down below so as usual always double check my description box and for this step I've been using literally the cheapest glue I had in my house and I purchased this last year from my local pound store and I just start working my gumdrop in little section and then sprinkle some clear beads or small little gemstone on top of it. It's best to work your gumdrops in small sections because this gives you better control, making you avoid mistakes. So as you will see, I've tried the two different bead types in different gumdrops because I wanted to see which one turned out to look better and I kind of like both ways so I was happy to switch it up a little bit and uh, test two different techniques. And then I just kept repeating the same process for all my gumdrops and in some of them I also mixed the two type of beads to see how they were going to look together. This part is quite messy, so I strongly recommend you to use some sort of uh, plastic tablecloth, as you see in my tutorial, because it's much easier to collect, you know, the leftover beads that didn't attach, and also to protect your table. And then while the glue was still fresh, I sprinkle some extra iridescent glitter just to give that extra sparkliness. And this is the final result. Oh my gosh, you guys, I cannot believe how beautiful these gumdrops turn out to look. They are absolutely gorgeous and I love the effect I got with both type of beads. I thought maybe my absolute favorite one is where I mix both of them together, as in this yellow gumdrop. It's a great sparkling colorful addition to anyone that want to go with a Candyland Christmas tree this year. They make my heart burst in joy every time I look at my tree. They're so sparkling. There's no better feelings in the world than customizing your Christmas tree exactly how you want it, like it's your own personal creation. Literally seeing your vision come to life and just seeing your tree getting fuller and fuller every year more because I keep adding new customized ornaments and they are so unique and so dear to my heart because of course I made it myself. Trust me guys this is the best feeling in the whole entire world. If you love Christmas you have to try one of these DIYs and I have plenty in my channel. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did please remember to leave a like. It took me a full week to make this video so please if you like this type of content support my channel and subscribe because that's the only way I'm going to be able to keep making more. Leave a comment down below, let me know what you think, you know how much I value your opinion and as you saw my Christmas tree is already up so this will be definitely one of my next uploads. So don't miss out, click the notification bell and I really hope to see you in my next video. Bye guys!